Hey everyone, Tanner Bell here and welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you the easiest way to make a freezer paper doormat. Whether you're making one this weekend or you wanna save it for later, do not miss out on this amazing technique. I get this question so often. Tanner, how do I make a doormat without the hassle? How do I make a really clean cut, store bought looking doormat without all the hard work, without all of the craft fails? And my friend, today I'm going to walk you through the entire process. I cannot wait to share it with you, but if you're brand new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. You do not wanna miss out on all our craft videos and craft hacks that are posted each week here on the YouTube channel. And if you're super brand new and you haven't heard about our membership, it is the place to be. Today we're using two different fonts from our membership. As soon as you become a member, you get access to thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts, training books. Uh, our Facebook group community is amazing. We love it over there. And you can get started today for as low as $19.99. Super awesome, instant access, and you guys are going to love it. So definitely check that out down below. But let's go over what you need to make your doormat. All right, my friends, here's your supplies needed for today's project. You're gonna need a doormat of your choice. This is actually a new style of doormat that we found on Amazon. So we're gonna link this to you. I'm really excited to use it and give it a shot for today's project. If it turns out good, I think you're gonna like it too. So definitely check that out. Um, really affordable and instead of having to run out to the store, you can grab it on Amazon. So you're also gonna need an easy press today. Now you may be saying, Tanner, we're not using heat transfer vinyl. What are we gonna do with this easy press? Stay tuned, my friends. Next up, you're gonna want some premium acrylic paint. This is from Americana. I love deco art, super great. And it's gonna be perfect for today's project. We're just using it in black. You're gonna need a little uh, paper plate. You're obviously gonna need your freezer paper to make the freezer paper doormat. Um, you want the 12 by 24 mat. If you do not have a 12 by 24 mat, my friends, you are missing out on getting the value out of your machine. You're gonna absolutely love using the freezer paper. So that'll be super fun. And then you just need a few different paint brushes to make the project go a lot faster. So you could use stencil brushes, but definitely not required. I would use a real paintbrush over a foam paintbrush. That'd be my only tip today. So really guys, the supplies are minimal for the project. And this is something that you can again, make and sell really well. You can do these as great hum, like housewarming gifts, all kinds of fun things, wedding gifts, and so much more. Let's go ahead and jump into Cricut Design Space. And let me share with you the design we're looking at to use today. So I already mentioned that we're using two of our fonts today. We're using Highlight Reel and we're using Demonstration. Now, if you're a yearly member here at Makers Gonna Learn, you get the free commercial use license and that comes with all of our images and fonts. So as soon as you upgrade, you're able to use all of these commercially completely free um, when you are a year member. So what we've got today is we're using a 30 by 17 inch brown square as our background. And then on top, we're using the highlight reel for our bell. And then we're using demonstration for the family. Now, what I've seen in trends when making doormats is that you use kind of like a cursive font for the word that you're emphasizing. So for us, it would be the last name of the family. And then um, whatever other word that goes with it, you wanna use you know, a really great basic font and just look at how well these come together. Now, one thing I wanna share with you guys, because you may be brand new to Cricut, is that you want to make sure when you are setting up your design to um, really see the full potential. So look right here, my friends, and this is all in capital letters. So let me um, backtrack this. So now, as you can see, when you are able to write out Bell without doing any manipulating, it looks totally different than the one we have on our doormat in Cricut Design Space already. So let me share with you the little twist and hack that you need to do with any cursive fonts. So what you wanna do is select this right here and you wanna go down to letter spacing and we're just going to bring this closer together 
by um, subtracting. So you just press the lower arrow and you see it starts coming together really well. Now, what I love about Highlight Reel, guys, there's no additional edits that need to be made. Once you are able to create that, you can see it's perfect. Some fonts, even after you bring the letter spacing together, you actually have to select and ungroup and then manually manipulate the rest. But with this one, not necessary whatsoever. So since you don't have to do anything else after bringing that letter spacing together, now all you need to do is select shift and you're going to select your entire um, bell right here. And then down at the bottom, what you want to do is select weld. So weld is found at the bottom right hand corner at the bottom of the layers panel. So right here, just click weld. And then we can delete this other bill out, not necessary. So again, my friends, the brown square on the background, we're just using it for sizing purpose to actually see what this is gonna look like in real life on our mat. We're actually not going to use it any further. So we're just going to hide this layer. So now that we deleted our background, we are going to attach it. Now you may say, Tanner, I already welded my bell what is attach going to do for me? My friend, if we do not attach it, Cricut does not know that you want your family to be right where it is on the canvas. So all we need to do, selecting both layers and how you can find out both layers are selected, look over here to the layers panel. You're gonna see both of these highlighted dark gray compared to this layer that's not grayed out. So once you're ready, you can press the attach. It's to the right of weld, again in the bottom panel of the layers, and you just click attach. So it adds the attach right here, so you know it's attached together, and whether it's selected or not, everything is connected. Now we can go ahead and press the make it button, and what we're going to do is we're gonna zoom out, and all we need to do now is position this. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We're just gonna position this in the middle of our mat. So you can kind of move it around and then just kind of see, we're gonna position it right about here and see how that looks. Maybe move it down a little. There we go. So just like so, you're gonna have that ready to go. All right, my friends, after we position it where we want it on the mat, be sure to turn mirror on because we are actually putting the shiny side up today, which will actually be put down when we are finished with the doormat and we have our stencil. So the um, shiny side of the freezer paper is actually what um, gets heat activated with the easy press to keep it secured down onto the mat. Let me show you. Now that you're connected to your machine, what we want to do now is click browse all material. So simply tap in freezer and you'll see right here, Cricut has an amazing freezer paper setting that you can simply select and it's going to know exactly how to cut it. And once you're ready, we're gonna use default pressure. We have a brand new blade in, it's perfect for today's project. So let's go ahead, load this 12 by 24 mat into our Cricut and begin cutting. So as you can see, we're shiny side up. And the reason why is the dull side sticks a little bit better to the mat. So this is able to get a nice grip on the mat, which is gonna give you better cut lines, especially when you're working with those thinner fonts like we have today, you wanna be very mindful of that. All right, my friends. So what we want to do now is after it comes out, we want to start taking care of these pieces that are go in the middles and things like that. So we're going to sit those to the side. Um, what we want to do as well is to peel up the actual cut image. So you just want to start in a corner and we're actually going to want to be careful about this because we're going to use this to help us position and lay down the inner pieces when we're ready for it. So come right here and you'll see that we have this right here um, that we'll actually use to help us. So we're gonna sit this to the side as well. And all the other inner pieces, I'm actually gonna leave it right there. I'm actually gonna put this on the back just so I know where it goes. So that's a little hack as well. Um, the family down here at the bottom, not really needed because there's no inner pieces besides I actually found one in the A, so we will need that. But now what we're going to deal, do is just simply peel up this right here. 
and it is freezer paper it is pretty strong but again just be mindful um, that it is still paper so it can easily rip and things like that we don't want that to happen to you so just like so i'm going to sit this to the side and guys this is going to look a little intimidating a little a little overwhelming that's okay because what we're going to do now is we're going to position this down onto the mat and the biggest thing that i have to say is make sure that you get it as centered as possible if it's your first doormat i totally understand if it's not perfect but every single time that you do a doormat you want to make sure to position it in the center as much as possible and as you can see it wants to roll up but as we get started with using the easy press you'll see how fast it is to start laying flat um, and it helps quite a bit so sometimes it's a little hard to tell exactly if it's in the centered right so what we're going to do is we're going to measure from where the image starts to the edge of the mat so this is a little more than six inches and then if we come over to this side you'll see that it's a little more than seven inches right at seven and a half so what that tells me is we actually need to move the image over just a tad i'm locking the placement so we're going to start just right up here in the corner and start positioning this down and it's going to take a little bit of time but you just want to slowly work through the entire doormat remember take more time now so that it'll be easier um, and stay down longer when we're actually stenciling. I would give probably 10 seconds per area. So I'm just gonna go real slow and work through the entire freezer paper sheet. All right, my friends, after it's positioned down and you can see it's definitely stuck down, what we're going to do is we're actually going to lay, remember this piece that we pulled up? I like to lay it back down just to help us know exactly where to position the inner pieces. So remember, we still have the inner pieces left on our mat. So we're gonna be able to see them right here, peel them up one by one and position them down. This also takes a minute, but again, my friend, a great thing to work on while you are watching Netflix or you know doing something a little bit more repetitive right so you can just work on this let it be your Zen crafting Tom All right, my friends, we have been able to position it all down. You can double check anything that you would want to move. You can take it um, and hit it one more time if you would like any areas, but we are ready to begin the painting process. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take some paint right like this and put it on our plate. And then you wanna take your paintbrush and kind of dab it. And then you can kind of dab it off just like so. So you wanna have quite a bit of paint on here, but make sure it's even. And then what we're gonna wanna do is we're really gonna wanna focus in on a dabbing motion. So up and down, just like so, around your entire project. This is a really repetitive one, but my tip that I have for you, my friend, keep a lot of paint on that brush. This is going to let it seep in. There's a lot of layers on this that you need to go down into, um, but you really have to trust the process. So you're going to kind of dab into your paint way more than you expected. And the reason why is it's actually gonna go faster that way instead of you trying to kind of spread the paint out. You definitely do not wanna spread the paint out. If you can see the doormat, you do not have enough paint on your brush. If you're trying to space it out and you can start seeing any of the natural doormat, there's not enough paint on your brush, my friend. So just keep going like this and you're gonna to want to go around the entire project just like this. Again, stencil brushes are great. I love a stencil brush, but as you can see here, you don't have to have them. You know we're all about practical crafting here, and we wanna make sure that you guys don't feel like to make one project, you have to spend an arm and two legs. So you want to be mindful about using what you have, um, and I really don't like 
when people feel like they can't accomplish crafts just because they don't have all of the latest and greatest tools. So this right here, basic paintbrush, and you're gonna be able to rock it. I know a lot of you guys have freezer paper um, in your home already, so you're not having to buy that. I'm sure you have some black acrylic paint. And then you also will only have to have a doormat. And guys, you can find these from anywhere from five to $10. Sometimes I get them for seven or eight at Target. This is a great thing to stock up on um, at Ikea. Again, we're gonna have this exact one we're using today linked. I'm really liking it. Um, I had to be a little bit more careful when I was ironing it down because some of the little pieces um, got stuck to my Easy Press. But again, it's a great material. I think it's actually gonna be um, a little bit more durable for the paint. So I'm super excited to see how well it turns out. And guys, you just have to trust the process and follow along, so it's super fun. So guys, all we're gonna do is repeat the same process across our entire project. All right, my friends, we're done stenciling right here. It's time for the reveal. We can go ahead and do any final checks. Do we want to peel anything, check anything, um, add more paint, anything like that? I think we're good. So we're just going to want to peel this up. Yay, look at this. So as you can tell, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, the um, paint is just a little bit different than you would normally see on um, a traditional doormat. No big deal. I love the look of this and it's so much fun. So guys, if the question is, can I use freezer paper to make a stencil? The answer is yes. I love that you guys are submitting such amazing Q and A's wanting to know how to make some amazing projects and do some amazing techniques. This is one that you definitely, like I said, either do it this weekend or just go ahead and bookmark it for your next craft or noon because this one's amazing. I do not want you guys to miss out on making sure to use this one. I love it. Um, and I know you guys are going to as well. So look at this guys, so fun and it looks amazing. I think you guys are going to love it. The best part is guys, it looks like it's professionally done and little do they know you were able to make it at home. Y'all, it's that easy to use freezer paper to make your very own doormat at home. And it takes probably a little bit more than a half hour from designing to creating to cutting and the stenciling. I would say 45 minutes and you are going to be completely done with this project. But my friend, I do not want you to leave here today without checking out all our amazing fonts. I want you guys to consider getting a membership. We have a trial membership for a dollar. You get 20 cut files or 20 fonts of your choice. You can mix and match them. You get 20 downloads for $1. That's five cents per cut file or font. The deal is insane. It is so awesome. It's a trial membership at Makers Gonna Learn and you're gonna be able to make this exact project. Do not miss out on trying out the dollar membership. We love it. You'll be able to make this project tonight and you can replicate our exact design. You can look on Pinterest for other doormat designs and then you can pick some related fonts. So the possibilities are truly endless, my friends, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you guys enjoyed this video, as always, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel right down below. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.